Good morning. My name is Jane Dropa, and I'm the vice chair of the Friends of the National World War II Memorial and the proud daughter of a World War II veteran. Thank you for joining us virtually to celebrate the 75th anniversary of Victory Over Japan Day, or VJ Day, the Allied Forces' victory in the Pacific and the end of World War II, the deadliest conflict in human history. 75 years have passed since millions of people around the globe celebrated the end of World War II. Thank you for joining us to celebrate our World War II veterans who served overseas, all of those who served on the home front, and our allies who together helped to defeat tyranny, preserve freedom, and literally save the world. The Friends of the National World War II Memorial, your host for today's day-long online commemorations, is a small nonprofit organization whose mission is to honor and preserve the national memory of World War II and to create the next greatest generation of tomorrow. The ceremonies taking place throughout the day today are part of the Friends' four-year World War II 75th anniversary commemoration, which began on Pearl Harbor Day 2016. Friends is the only organization to have hosted a full four-year 75th anniversary tribute, marking every major battle in which American troops participated during World War II. Lord, please be honored here as we present our gratitude to you and also to the sacrificial heroes of the United States and Allied forces in influencing the demise of Axis powers in the Pacific Theater. As we in the U.S. officially recognize this victory by the signing of surrender by representatives of the Empire of Japan on the USS Missouri 75 years ago today, may we rejoice in this action as it officially ended the deadliest and most expansive set of hostilities that humans have ever experienced on planet Earth and thus finalizing World War II. May heroes, their supporters, consisting of family members and friends, and their progeny be blessed on account of their sacrifices made to foil the tyrannical plans of a potentially one world dominating government, which was primarily led by the National Socialist Workers Party, otherwise known of as the Nazi Party and co-joining powers. May the events of this commemoration, which is so fittingly performed on the 75th anniversary, be honorable, meaningful, and historically informative. I pray this in the name above all names. Amen. We commemorate on the 2nd of September the uh, signing uh, on the deck of the USS Missouri in Tokyo Bay uh, of the surrender instrument by which the Imperial Japanese Empire surrendered to the United States. We were represented uh, principally by General Douglas MacArthur, the senior army officer in the Pacific, and uh, Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz. The uh, achievement of a surrender was long and controversial. The decision made in Japan was much controverted, and there was much uh, worry, I guess I can call it that, uh, of continued opposition uh, to the surrender by various uh, detached organizations of the Japanese army in different parts of the Pacific. That did not happen, and of course the surrender was signed and eventually observed uh, officially through Switzerland a few days uh, later, and that was the uh, that was the end of the war. We remember, we commemorate soldiers and Marines who served and died there. Those are the people that we uh, honor and remember today. And uh, to use a quotation of Winston Churchill. Succeeding generations must not be allowed to forget these triumphs and the sacrifices made by the citizens and soldiers uh, who prosecuted them. My name is Jeff Reinbold, and it is my honor to serve as the superintendent of National Mall and Memorial Parks here in the nation's capital. It is a pleasure to speak with you from the World War II Memorial, one of the many memorials under the care of the National Park Service. To commemorate our nation's military legacy, and honor the veterans of our armed conflicts. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, and VJ Day marks the final commemoration of those milestone observances. 
This year may be one of our final opportunities at a major anniversary to honor and thank the World War II veterans and their families in person. It was a very difficult decision to cancel this year's VJ Day observance. We know how many people share our great disappointment in not being able to gather here to properly honor the fallen from World War II, especially as we mark 75 years since the war's end. We are indebted to the Friends of the National World War II Memorial, our partner in the care of this special place, for providing this virtual forum. And we thank the Friends, and we share in their mission to ensure, ensure that the legacy and sacrifices of World War II veterans are not forgotten. More than four million visitors come to the memorial each year. Thank you to the volunteers and National Park Service staff who care for this magnificent place. The pride you take in your work is apparent to us all. I know how difficult it has been for you to be away from here, especially with the observance of so many important anniversaries. I truly look forward to welcome you back when it is safe to do so. The surrender ceremony aboard the USS Missouri on September 2nd, 1945. General Douglas MacArthur said, it is my earnest hope, indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion, a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. A world founded upon faith and understanding, a world dedicated to the dignity of man and the fulfillment of his most cherished wish for freedom, tolerance, and justice. In a world still struggling to achieve universal peace and understanding, herein lies the relevance of history and the power of our nation's sacred memorials. These places are not merely granite and marble reminders of those heroic deeds of the men and women who fought and struggled and ultimately were victorious. They remind us that extraordinary things can come from people with otherwise ordinary lives. They help us understand the monumental trials and sacrifices that have shaped our nation, our government, and our society. And they remind us not only of what we can achieve when we work together as a nation, but also of the work that remains to be completed. The National Park Service is proud to be the steward of this memorial and of their legacy. Know that we will be here every day of every year, watching over this place to keep it and protect it with all the reverence it demands. Thank you. On September 2nd, 1945, aboard the USS Missouri, anchored in Tokyo Bay, Allied and Japanese officers signed the terms of Japanese surrender, a day now remembered as Victory Over Japan Day or VJ Day. Japan's capitulation ended six years of hostilities and bloodshed, officially concluding the war. Through the 1930s, Japan's imperial expansion, enabled by its modernized and formidable navy, posed a serious threat in the Pacific. On December 7, 1941, tensions boiled over when Japan attacked the American fleet at Pearl Harbor. Shortly after this raid, Japan launched similar attacks on American forces on Guam, Wake Island, and the Philippines each of which fell by mid-1942. Before long, Japan had claimed a huge collection of nations and islands under its new empire, and its powerful navy secured its reach. America and its allies now had two theaters of war to worry about, and images of Japanese brutality against captured Americans gave this new fight a sense of urgency. With the Japanese fleet seemingly unstoppable, Allied forces in the Pacific reorganized and regrouped, looking for a way to halt this advance and regain ground. Fortunately, Japanese actions to capture Midway Atoll in June 1942 were quelled with a decisive American victory that sank Japan's four carriers and several other vessels before forcing the remaining fleet to retreat. This battle was a monumental turning point that effectively halted Japanese expansion by significantly crippling Japan's naval strength and reducing the number of carriers and skilled pilots. With Japan's momentum halted, the Allies seized the initiative 
and launched an amphibious assault on Guadalcanal, which ultimately repelled Japanese aggression in the Solomon Islands. From there, the Allies launched an island-hopping campaign, a series of amphibious assaults aimed to bring American forces closer to Japan and the occupied Philippines by capturing strategic islands along the way and leapfrogging others to efficiently gain the most useful ground with less bloodshed. Tarawa was the first target, an assault that ended in an American victory, but at an astounding cost over its four-day duration. Using the lessons learned at Tarawa, hard-fought victories in the Marshall Islands, Mariana Islands, and the Palau Islands through 1944 brought Allied forces ever closer to their ultimate objectives. With every victory on land, American forces secured greater air and naval superiority, yet casualties still climbed. In October, Allied forces began amphibious operations to liberate the Philippines, a task that would take 10 months to complete. Allied forces elsewhere, meanwhile, continued to leapfrog closer to mainland Japan into 1945. American Air Forces, spearheaded by the new long-range B-29 Superfortress, began a strategic bombing campaign against Japan. Tough amphibious operations in the spring of 1945 captured the islands of Iwo Jima and later Okinawa, each in an important stepping stone for an invasion of the Japanese mainland. Despite its rapid loss of military and imperial strength, as well as its besiegement under Allied strategic bombing, Japanese forces did not surrender and American military leaders began to debate the necessity and human cost of an amphibious assault on Japan itself. Instead, on August 6, 1945, an American B-29 dropped the first atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima, causing catastrophic damage to the city and shocking the world. On August 9th, another B-29 dropped a second bomb on Nagasaki, just one day after the Soviet Union, no longer at war with a defeated Germany, invaded occupied Manchuria. At last, Japan had had enough. After a few days of diplomatic assurances of the post-war structure, on August 14th, August 15th in Japan, Japanese leaders agreed to surrender, and Emperor Hirohito issued a proclamation to the Japanese people that they should accept this decision and honor its terms. That day in Washington, President Harry Truman announced the news of Japan's surrender, signifying an end to hostilities. Crowds of jubilant Americans took to the streets in celebration for a moment they had been waiting for since the attack on Pearl Harbor. Ticker tape, parades, fireworks, and bands overcrowded the streets as families, friends, and strangers marked the occasion across the country. On the morning of September 2, 1945, General Douglas MacArthur, supported by Admiral Chester Nimitz, Admiral Bull Halsey, and several other top American and Allied officers received nine Japanese delegates aboard the Pacific Fleet's flagship, the USS Missouri, anchored in Tokyo Bay. Two copies of the official terms of surrender were signed at a small table on the Missouri's deck by representatives from each warring nation in this theater. This event officially marked the end of the war in the Pacific, popularly known as Victory Over Japan Day or VJ Day. After years of long and bloody fighting, with the surrender of Japan, the guns at last fell silent. With its last belligerent defeated, World War II at long last came to an end. 
It's 75 years since that Halcyon VJ Day. Oh, do I remember it well, even though it was 75 years ago. No, I wasn't overseas at the time. I was at the Army Air Corps base in Apalachicola, Florida. But what a day it was, how we celebrated, and we're celebrating it again today. I do recall, though, all of us then went on to different ways, and among some of the things I did was writing books. One of them was a book of poetry, and one poem in it was a remembrance of that great VJ day. And I will recite that poem for you now. Here it is. World War II is over. At last, it was done. Oh, how we celebrated. Was it ever fun? Soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines in our spiffy dress uniforms flooded the scenes. Pretty girls wearing gloves and cute little hats and high-heeled shoes rather than flats greeted us now wherever we'd go, on the streets or in bars or at the USO. And when the band played Little Brown Chug, we'd laugh and we'd flirt and we'd jitterbug. Never since then have we heard anyone sing like Sinatra, Dino, Ella, and Bing. God, we were young, optimistic, and full of zest. We were up for all challenges, for any test. College days and so much more beckoned us now and into it we tore. And when those days on campus came to an end, onward we moved toward the road's next bend. Then we got married to that girl we adored, got a job and bought a house we could barely afford. With children, with families, with friends, with delight, we kept surging forward with all of our might. But the years kept passing, and then one day, I noticed that my hair was turning gray. So what if I was a little bit older? I just ignored it like the pain in my shoulder. I kept right on enjoying the world that we'd saved from those tyrants so evil and depraved. But now, faster and faster the years go by, and many of my dear pals have said goodbye. And though today's world might consider us old, they should have seen us when we were young and bold. Fewer than one mil fewer than a half, one million of us still march along, but I'll remember us all 16 million strong. I'll remember us all as World War II buddies, not as some out of date fuddy duddies. I'll remember that time when we went off to war and then returned to a world that was better than before. I'll remember all those with whom I served. The greatest generation, a title deserved. That's it, and I'm gonna go celebrate the 75th. So with that, I'll say, off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Hello. As Senator Bob Dole's co-chairman to build the World War II Memorial, it is my honor on the 75th anniversary of VJ Day to pay tribute to the millions of Americans who served and those who built the arsenal of democracy at home. The gold stars on this beautiful monument represent hundreds of thousands of comrades who lost their lives helping defeat the greatest tyrannies in history. The war in the Asia Pacific theater was particularly brutal and difficult for those who served there. We are forever in the debt of these veterans and must never forget the sacrifices they made for all of us. Hello, I'm Tom Brokaw, and it is my great personal privilege to participate in this commemoration of VJ Day, the end of the greatest war in the history of mankind. I was just a top, but I was living on an army base at the time, and the extraordinary celebration that erupted across that base and in those small towns of southwestern South Dakota, I knew this was an event that will define my lifetime and the lifetime of everyone who comes after. So we need to be reminded again about what happens when America works together in common cause, because we're going through another kind of war right now, and we need to prevail, because this is an unseen threat. But nonetheless, it is a war that depends on all of us pulling together and finding that great American spirit that has gotten through us, gotten us through so many, many challenges in the past. I'm confident we can do it again. And if we remember the elation of VJ Day and the triumph of the Western nations against the greatest war 
in the history of mankind, the greatest enemies, we can do it again. On behalf of the 2.3 million soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardsmen, I want to say thank you to all World War II veterans, living legends of the greatest generation, and their families watching online across the nation and around the world. Patriots like you fought the bloodiest war in human history, and your generation, the greatest generation, that took up arms against tyranny in the Second World War, fought for something. You fought to achieve a better peace. From the ashes of destruction, death, and bloodshed of that war, you established a rules-based global order rooted in political and economic liberty that has maintained Great Bar Peace for over seven decades. My father and mother both were part of that generation. My father was with the 4th Marine Division and made the assault landings at Kwajalein, Saipan, Tinian, and Iwo Jima, while my mother served at a Navy hospital in Seattle, taking care of the wounded coming back from the Pacific battles. Although both have passed on, I carry their example of integrity and selfless service as daily inspiration. While my parents served in the Pacific Theater, the Second World War was truly a global conflict. Many others fought across the Atlantic, in North Africa, in Italy, at Normandy, and on the Eastern Front. In fact, in June 1944, as my father hit the beach at Saipan with the Fighting Fourth, his brother was at Normandy on the other side of the world, on the way to liberate Paris from Nazi control. It's an incredible tale of one family's service, and it helps illustrate the scope and scale of the conflict our nation was then fighting and the sacrifice of every American family during World War II. I often reflect on my parents' service to this nation and the lessons I take from their example have shaped my view on America's role and place in the world. My parents instilled in me a sense of service and an understanding of how lucky I am to be an American. How lucky I was to grow up in a country where we have freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, and all the other rights and privileges that we as Americans enjoy in our daily lives. Today, those with first-hand knowledge of World War II are becoming fewer and fewer. And so we must never forget, never forget the horrific cost of the Great Power War and the sacrifices that went before us. Last year, I had the opportunity to go to the 75th anniversary of the Normandy landings. I was talking to several of the veterans there and asked one of them simply, what is your lesson from World War II? What is your great lesson here for those of us in uniform today? He looked up at me and tears came to his eyes and he simply said, General, never let it happen again. Never let it happen again. As the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, on behalf of all those wearing the cloth of our nation, we extend our sincerest thanks to our World War II veterans for passing on to us the gift of freedom. And we renew our commitment to preserving the peace you established and to protect the Constitution and the values you fought so hard to defend. Today we remember the people that died during the war in the Pacific and the more than 60 million people lost worldwide, including 400,000 Americans during the deadliest military conflict in human history. They are not forgotten. We are pleased to be joined today by actress-singer Helen Hayes Award nominee and recording artist Mary Milben, Mary is an advocate for America's veterans and a spouse to a U.S. Navy veteran. We close now with Mary's special performance of America the Beautiful and God Bless America in tribute to the 16 million men and women who served with the U.S. Armed Forces during World War II. Oh, beautiful for 
your spacious skies for amber waves of the day. For purple mountain majesties above. Sea to 